what is your sense of how much of a role choice plays in, um, in sexual orientation and identity, and what is your sense of the way in which, uh, in which biology and um, biology and choice and experience, how do, they, how do they all interact in your various work? Well, yeah, that's a, that's a heavy question. Yes. That's probably the heaviest question because nothing happens in a vacuum and things are not static. When you are born, in fact, when you're in utero, your brain is developing. When you're born, your brain continues to develop. When you're engaging in, you know, in, in, in gender appropriate versus inappropriate behavior, whatever the hell that means, your brain is still developing. And you're getting a sense of who you are on the basis of being bad me or good me, being accepted me or unaccepted me. And you, you, you grow in this social circumstance where you learn the rules of engagement, you learn how to get what you need, how to get what you don't need. And ultimately, puberty hits. And all of this then becomes kind of concentrated in terms of blood flow in your genitals. And what is directing that blood flow? Are you directing that blood flow or is it being directed by things in the external world that when you see them, you end up with the Wayne's World shwing happening, <laughs> right? And I mean, I say that for both men and women. So the question then is not so much is there a static event that happens, but is there a process that happens to the point that once you're there, there is no choice. Just as there's no choice that you're not going to eat a cockroach that you've stepped on. There is no choice. You know what you like. You're not necessarily in knowledge of what you don't like. But once you're there, you're there. And then you get to this embellishing that Paul well, talks think, about. Well, I think as well you have to say, you have to ask your, this choice question, you have to say, are, can you, are you choosing uh, who you're attracted to? I, I don't think there, are, there is any good data that, that demonstrates that we choose to be attracted to male-bodied individuals or female-bodied individuals. Can we choose to act on those feelings? Well, yeah, we can. We can choose to act on them because there are some people who choose not to act on them and, and uh, submit themselves to reparative therapy and try to, uh, uh, try to, try to uh, not think those thoughts and, and act on them. Can we choose our identities? Uh, can we choose, can we be sexually attracted to adult males, but choose not to identify as gay, choose rather to identify as straight and be on the, the down low? Yeah, absolutely. So we can make choices about behaviors, we can make choices about identity, but we don't, we don't make choices about who we're attracted to and what uh, arouses us genitally. Just to, to riff off of what Paula said, I think that it's a process of discovery and I, I absolutely agree that it's, this isn't a choice. Mm. And it, it, if I've learned anything in the research that I've done so far is that it, it, equating or orientation with genital responding is just kind of silly. <laughs> um, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't fit with what the, what the data are saying. Um, and, and certainly, you know, women are not making choices to become aroused to, for example, um, bonobo to stimuli. Um, so, it, 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 it just doesn't fit. It doesn't fit with, with that model. Now, one of the things that I, I get concerned about with, you know, we, we brought up this um, idea of fluidity of female sexuality. You know, fluidity really implies that there are sort of this, you know, women have this capacity to sort of be either same or opposite sex attracted. And, you know, we're only beginning to understand what the factors are that contribute to the expression of same and opposite sex attractions. And, um, sexual relationships. But within that is an implication that, so again, talking about reparative therapy, that there is more flexibility in a female sexual system that you can then volitionally say, well, if I have the fluidity to be, you know, same sex attracted, why can that not be channeled into opposite sex attraction? And I, I think that that's a really dangerous path. I don't believe that that's necessarily the case. <laughs>